welcome to our little mini retreat, everyone. Um, it'll be nice to do some Manjushri together. And uh, it's just a short sadhana, but it has a lot of layers you can weave into it. And it's a really beautiful practice to have in your Dharma tool belt. So for this session, we'll do the practice um, just at a gentle pace. And then we'll have a quick break. And then we'll kind of unpack some portions of the sadhana and talk about what they mean and what to do with them and different options. So I thought we'd just kind of jump right in to the practice itself um, and then explore kind of all of the layers of it later as the retreat goes on. So after lunch, uh, we'll do a similar thing where we'll do the practice once again with a slightly different emphasis and then more explaining and then tomorrow practice more explaining. So um, make a list of any questions you have as the Sadhana goes through, but probably they'll get covered because I'm going to go through it section by section. So, um, but if there are hanging things or things about Manjushri you've been curious about, make sure that um, they don't get missed. All right, so because we're doing Manjushri and Manjushri is one of the many Buddhas of wisdom, we're going to start with the Heart Sutra. And so if you want to get yourself first into nice meditation posture, nice and stable, centered in your space. If you um, haven't already grabbed your mala, grab your mala now so it's all ready to go. And just breathe a few times intentionally, getting yourself to settle. And as you settle, you can shift to the natural rhythm of your breath. and the Heart Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagawan was dwelling on mass of Vulture's Mountain, in Rajagriha together with a great community of monks and a great community of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagawan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avlokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avlokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the profound perfection of wisdom he said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avlokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also is empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic. Unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element, and so on, up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. 
There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata om gate gate paragate parasamgate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva, mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagawan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva, mahasattva, Arya Avlokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagawan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharivadi Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avlokiteshvara, and those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, asuras, and gandavas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagawan. And just sitting with that a little bit. In particular, thinking that ourselves, the practitioner, lack inherent existence, that the practice of Manjushri lacks inherent existence, that the results of this practice lack inherent existence. And all of this is because the three spheres dependently arise. Things arise in dependence upon causes and conditions. Things arise because of parts and context. All phenomena are merely designated by the mind on the valid basis, which means not one shred of inherent existence. And just see if you can settle your mind to whatever ability you're able to in the middle way. Free from nihilism, free from eternalism. And with this awareness of the lack of inherent existence, we then do the Manju Street practice. Namo Guruja Vagyasharaya. I make humble obeisance to you, great Sonkapa, personification of Manjushri in human form with all the marks and signs of perfection. Your magnificent attainments were nurtured in the matrix of motherly method and wisdom combined, of which the vibrant syllable D is an embodiment. Sipping the nectars of the profound teachings directly from Manjushri's masterly eloquence, you realize the heart of wisdom. Inspired by your example, I will now set out a description of the steps for actualization of Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of wisdom, in accord with your realization. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. 
I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Connect with refuge in Bodhicitta. the inner refuge of our mind and its ability to progress into Buddhahood, the outer refuge of the teacher, the teachings, the community, and the central refuge being the Dharma itself particularly that which we have integrated, particularly true cessations. Those methods of wisdom which will directly cut the root of suffering, self-grasping ignorance. and the four immeasurables. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from desire for friends and hatred for enemies. And so we meditate briefly on Tonglen, giving and taking, thinking that on the in-breath, we take the suffering of all sentient beings by connecting with compassion. On the out-breath, we connect with wishing happiness for all sentient beings, loving kindness. And we do this with a mind that acknowledges the potential of all sentient beings to be free from suffering and with a mind of equanimity. Compassion on the in-breath, loving kindness on the out-breath. Compassion on the in-breath, loving kindness on the out-breath. Again and again, at your own pace. And you can bring the Tonglen visualization to these ideas. In-breath compassion, visualizing taking the suffering in the form of black smoke. Out-breath loving kindness, imagining sending out golden light. And with each cycle, the self-absorbed, self-cherishing thought decreases and your good heart of bodhicitta increases. In black smoke, out golden light.
decreasing self-cherishing, increasing cherishing others. Freeing the narrow focus into an expanded focus. And visualize one final out breath of golden light. And imagine that golden light that you send out also surrounds you and returns to you, filling you back up, but this time freed from attachment and clinging. And we recite the Swavova mantra to purify perception and emptiness. Om Sawa Shuddha Sawa Dhamma Sawa Shuddha Om. And visualize at our heart is our mind in the shape of an egg, its point upwards. Inside the egg, on a full moon disk, is an orange letter D. From which an infinite amount of light emits. It fills the whole of my body purifying all my negativities and removing all my obscurations accumulated since beginningless time. The light rays leave through my pores and become offerings to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, thereby delighting them. This causes the blessings of the body, speech, and mind of these holy beings to dissolve into the light that destroys the darkness of ignorance of all sentient beings thus placing them in wisdom's illumination. And just stabilize that. Your mind, white egg, somewhere around your heart center, 
but try not to give too much focus to your physical body. Just your mind in this white shape with the syllable D at its center. And the light fills this physical body, but you're still not very aware of the body itself. And you become so full that the light radiates out, making offerings to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, dispelling the ignorance of sentient beings. And whether you consider these ideas analytically or not, just imagine everything bathed in light. The rays then recollect into the syllable D. It transforms into light. My ordinary perception and my clinging thereto vanish. And I emerge as venerable Manjushri, or Manjushri appears at your crown if you don't have the empowerment. Orange in color with one face and two arms. Right hand brandishes the sword of wisdom in the space above. And my heart between my thumb and ring finger of my left hand, the stem of an Utpala lotus. Upon its petals in full bloom by my left ear rests a volume of the perfection of wisdom sutra. I sit in full lotus posture and I'm adorned with precious ornaments for head, ears, throat, and shoulders, as well as bracelets and anklets. Draped in a flowing mantle of skirt of exquisite silks, my hair is tied up in five knots and coils counterclockwise. Bearing an entrancing and serene smile, I sit amidst a mass of light radiating from my body. And so take a minute and stabilize that visualization, whether yourself as the deity, if you have the empowerment, or the deity above your crown, if you don't. Even if it's just a general impression of radiant orange light or a few features like the sword, the face. Try to see Manjushri in your mind's eye, just using the image in front as a guide, not staring at it.
And together with this clear appearance, if you have the empowerment, also generate divine pride that thinks I am the resultant Buddha, Manjushri, embodiment of wisdom. And without the empowerment, you generate a strong aspiration as well as a confidence that knows this is your potentiality. So spend a moment connecting with the image and your identity, whether resultant or aspirational. And then we add the letter OM, marking the crown. AH, marking the throat chakra. HUM, marking the heart chakra. Add the three syllables. Om being enlightened body, ah being enlightened speech, whom being enlightened mind. Place them at the three places. If you can see the syllables clearly, that's great, either Tibetan or English characters, or you can just think white, red, blue. From the whom at the heart, emit rays of light that invite the wisdom beings from the inconceivable mansion of their pure realms. They resemble Manjushri as described above and are surrounded by hosts of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Send out invitational, invocational light.
imagine you're completely surrounded by Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who are all in the aspect of Manjushri. Or if it's easier, you can just imagine being surrounded by radiant orange light. And we think that we invite all of these actual enlightened holy beings to what we have visualized. They absorb and become one with the image you visualized. And we make offerings. Umaya Bhagishara Sapari Wa Agyam Pati Sahum Soha Umaya Bhagishara Sapari Wa Agyam Pati Sahum Soha Om Varya Vagyashara Sapariva Pure Pay Pati Sahum Soha Om Varya Vagyashara Sapariva Do Pay Pati Sahum Soha Om Varya Vagishara Sapariva Aloke Prati Saum Soha Om Varya Vagishara Sapariva Gande Prati Saum Soha Om Varya Vagishara Sapariva Nute Prati Sahum Soha Om Varya Vagishara Sapariva Shabta Prati Sahum Soha I make obeisance to your youthful form, O Manjushri, like that of a dynamic and graceful 16-year-old. You repose upon the full moon as your cushion. At the center of an expansive milk-white lotus, I make obeisance to your speech, O mighty fulfiller of wishes, so malevolent in the nines of countless sentient beings, a lucent ephony to accord with each listener's capacity its multiplicity embellishing the hiring of all unfortunate ones. O Manjushri, I make obeisance to your mind, wherein is illuminated the entire tapestry of the myriad objects of knowledge. It is a tranquil ocean of unfathomable profundity, of immeasurable breadth, boundless like space itself. And now visualize upon the heart of Manjushri, either yourself or the Manjushri at your crown, a moon disk, the center of which is a syllable D, encircling it at the disk's periphery stands the rosary-like mantra of Om Arapat Sana D. All of the syllables radiate light, which gathers both the wisdoms of exposition, dialectics and composition, and the wisdoms of hearing, contemplation and meditation, which are possessed by the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas, and the wise and learned masters of all the Buddhist and non-Buddhist traditions. So just be with the mantra. And if it's not familiar yet, you can again just think orange light 
in a circle on top of a white moon disc with the D in the center. And the mantra radiating light, which invites and gathers all forms of wisdom. And we'll stabilize that visualization before reciting the mantra. and add the mantra to the visualization. Om Rapatsanadi Om Rapatsanadi Om Rapatsanadi Om Rapatsanadi Om Rapatsanadi Om Rapatsanadi Om Marapatsanadi 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 And continue the mantra just under your breath Om Marapatsanadi Om Marapatsanadi Om Marapatsanadi Om Marapatsanadi
Kumarapatsana D. And then we purify any mistakes or omissions. Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasattva Deno Padisha Dhiro Me Bawa Suto Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Anarakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Triyam Kuru Hum Ahahahaho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sattva Ahum Pe. And we dedicate. By virtue of this practice, may I quickly accomplish the powerful attainments of Manjushri, and then may I lead all beings without exception to that supreme state. Remembering the emptiness of the agent, the action, the object, all lack inherent existence because they dependently arise. And you can relax your attention. Okay, so that's the simple form of the practice. Then we're going to start to layer in some um, more practices that go with it. So there's associated practices to generate the seven wisdoms. And you can peek at the sadhana at the end of the sadhana to look at those. There's also a practice particularly to increase memory which uses the mantra at the end of the mantra recitation time. So we're going to start to weave in a little bit more elaboration. And uh, in the next section, I'm just going to unpack what we've just done and add in a little bit more. And then after lunch, we're going to do the session in a more kind of elaborated form. But just now, you know, here's how to do the short version. And you can do it quicker than I did it. You can do it in a 15 minute way. But this particular practice, even in this very short form, is very useful if you're about to do something that requires a lot of mental energy. So if you have to plan something or strategize something, if you need to have a really delicate conversation with some people, this is a really good way to kind of sharpen up your wisdom and bring it to the forefront, even just in the immediate, in the everyday. Even though this practice is for enlightenment, is for cutting the root of samsaras, for getting rid of ignorance, all these huge goals, it's also very useful in daily life. Um, if you're feeling like you need to study something that you're having a lot of blockages to, if before you do the study, even just the mantra, Oma Rapatsanadi, just a mala of that before you study can really clear the cobwebs. So this is a really useful practice. And it's something that we do in the monasteries and nunneries pretty much every day, at least the mantra or the praise to Manjushri before we do class. So it's um, not by accident. And these syllables really wake up and activate a lot of wisdom within us. So I'll be talking about what each of the syllables of the mantra means and, the, and what all of the iconography of Manjushri is and kind of the story of him um, as we go through the retreat. But for now, we'll just have a half hour break and just kind of stretch our legs. And uh, if you want to kind of read through the sadhana and kind of get familiar with it, if you haven't already, you can do that too. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. Thanks.